through that process, uh, we would take these trips to Anchorage and uh, in this religion, <laughs> um, they have their own food system. They have their own canned fake meats and all of that. And so because of that, um, I started and I wasn't consciously aware of this, but I had huge problems with comprehension. Andy, how did you find Carnival? So thanks for asking, Dave. Um, I uh, It was actually uh, a few months back. I was actually, prior to that, for a month, I was doing intermittent fasting. And... I hadn't, I'd heard of, uh, I've, I'd heard of carnivore, uh, because of Joe Rogan's podcast a couple of years ago. Um, and, uh, but I kind of thought it was a little extreme. Now I've done a lot of extreme things in my life in terms of health wise, but this was, I mean, I did keto for a year. I, I did, I was gluten free for eight years, like really religiously. I mean, um, so I wasn't like uh, adverse or or um, I wasn't against anything to do with extremes, but I'm kind of in a place in my life where I just wanted to get into more of a balanced space. And to me, that was kind of like balanced on all spectrums, you know, spiritually, mentally, physically, all of that. And to me, uh, even hearing uh, Jordan uh, Peterson uh, talk about who in my opinion, is one of the most brilliant people on the planet. Um, talk about uh, just eating steaks all day was kind of like, well, this guy's brilliant, but he might be all a little bit off his rocker too, you know, because I was just like, I don't think I'm going to do that. Well, uh, as I was going through the intermittent fasting for a month, I actually halfway in between there, I switched to OMAD, so one meal a day. And I started losing weight and feeling pretty darn good. And uh, so I was like, huh, I think I'm going to um, sort of research a little bit more about the no carb thing because I did keto. But the thing is, is before, but the thing is, is that I had a lot of cravings during that time. And this was before COVID. And I, like I said, I did that for over a year. Um, but I was still having incredible amounts of like inflammation, bloating, gas, I mean, all of it, mental health challenges up to gazoo. Um, prior to any of that, I was on medications uh, years ago. The doctors told me I would never get off of the medications for uh, major depression and also uh, major anxiety. So I was on medications for, I want to say, over 10, maybe 13 years. And... In fact, just like some of your other uh, guests here, uh, you know, when you get a diagnosis, even if it's something bad, <laughs> it was like I was sort of relieved. You know, I was like, oh, OK, I got depression. OK, I'll take medications. That'll just sort of solve everything. Right. Well, uh, it didn't. <laughs> and I continued to have all kinds of constipation. I had constipation ever since I was like 13, um, you know, just all kinds of problems. Now, I grew up in a very high control uh, religious indoctrination. Uh, and what I mean by that is basically sort of like a religious cult. It's a well-known, uh, you know, super conservative type of a Christian indoctrination type of a environment. The thing that made it more potent and sort of more powerful on my psyche and my body is that I was taken up to Alaska when I was seven, which is where I'm at now. I've kind of traveled all over the United States, but I'm currently back in Alaska. The thing about that particular religion, I'll just be respectful and not name it, but that particular cult, uh, in my opinion, my experience, is that it's all about health. <laughs> in fact, they have huge hospitals that represent their health uh, you know, practices. And so uh, being seven at the time and being you know, systematically indoctrinated in isolation. By the way, we were 75 miles from civilization, no running water, no electricity, you know, this type of dynamic. Uh, of course, I had no conscious awareness of what was going on with my health. And we would take a, you know, a couple trips every year to Anchorage, which was 250 miles away. Um, and 
I grew up in this little Indian village called Solana. Uh, it had a population of less than 200 people. And it was mainly about settlers that moved out there because they wanted to get away from society and they wanted to change. So they had something called a BLM uh, land grant act that was going on. And you could basically just take you and your family out there and, and stake out five acres. And for five acres, you paid five bucks, but you had to live, you had to build an establishment, live on it for a year. And then the property was yours. So we went out and did that in 1984. Uh, 1984, yeah, 84. And so um, through that process, uh, we would take these trips to Anchorage and uh, in this religion, <laughs> um, they have their own food system. They have their own canned fake meats and all of that. And so because of that, um, I started and I wasn't consciously aware of this, but I had huge problems with comprehension, huge trouble in the in-home school and the schools that I went to um, when I could find, you know, when my parents could find education out there. But constantly being fed this unbalanced protein. I mean, it's basically packed full of soy and, you know, preservatives in the form of fake hot dogs and <laughs> fake chicken and <laughs> fake, you know, hamburger and you name it, you know. So I grew up on that, which is kind of ironic because growing up out in the woods, you know, you'd think that you would grow up <laughs> more in the carnivore type of an environment, <laughs> but, but I never killed anything, you know. So, so that led to a whole slew of not only psychological problems, but physical problems that started early on. Uh, I, I used to have major, major anxiety as a kid, scared of everyone, scared of everything. Now, I have a theory based off of some of the some of your other um, uh, guests on here. I, I felt like some of us were on the same like page, you know, wavelength, because I think there's connection with trauma and carbohydrates because i have this sort of theory that carbohydrates is an addiction and also trauma or intense emotions can also be an addiction or an addictive response you know it kind of reminds me of like people that are really interested in watching scary movies or something with intense emotions i mean a good story always has you know all of those things right so i got to thinking about that in the context of that but anyway Maybe we'll talk about that a little later. But anyway, what what brought me into the space that I'm at now, and I and I'm at a the, I just reached the two month mark, so I'm just a baby in this. However, um, for many many years, I mean, I had chronic fatigue. I literally was just in bed 24 seven. At times, I just couldn't even get up to move, um, and uh, all kinds of problems with my my gum health receding gums, um, coated tongue. I mean, just tooth, pro you know, all kinds of things going on with that. Uh, and I had no clue, not even an inkling, because whenever I go to the doctors, you know, they don't address those things. You know, I mean, they'll tell you if you have like gingivitis or something like that, but no solutions really, you know. And so recently, uh, through the carnivore experience, um, that is all gone. It's just gone. Like the depression is gone, the anxiety, except for normal anxiety. Like I was a little anxious about this. I tried to even back out, you know, when I when I emailed you, I was like, okay, well, you know, I've only been doing this. I'm just a baby, you know. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, I think I'm gonna reverse a little bit, you know. So, but those are normal things, you know. The the other anxieties, and I and I'm starting to feel think and believe that there is a correlation between trauma and this, this desire or this fulfilling with addictions. And then I think there's this sort of sleeper energy on a collective level that has been using that as sort of an opportunity to control the masses or to at least bring us into a place of more conformity rather than self-expression or personal autonomy, if that makes sense. So I'm fascinated with this and what sort of took me from going from, you know, uh, three months ago from going from, uh, you know, intermittent fasting OMAD and then to launching into uh, the carnivore 
uh, lifestyle is I had a friend uh, years ago. I used to be a spiritual guide for a couple of years here in Alaska. And so I did a lot of um, help with people, you know, accessing their loved ones on the other side, which can be controversial because before I didn't used to believe in any of this stuff. Prior to that, I took classes at, at the Boulder Psychic Institute in Colorado in order to get some skills in those areas. But anyway, um, I, I was at a specific location. And so I got in contact with other people around the world that was part of the spiritual community. At the time, one of those people was uh, a friend of mine. Uh, her name is Jamie Bates. And I hadn't been in contact with her for a couple of years after COVID. Prior to COVID, you know, it was like everything was booming and just doing a lot of readings and all that kind of stuff. And it was just really thriving. And then after COVID, it was just like, or during that whole experience, we all sort of dropped off the radar because, you know, you have to deal with, you know, internal battles, plus any kind of relationship stuff with ourselves and then relationship stuff with the outside world and, you know, learning how to navigate the fear. I think it really t took us into a place of trans deep transformation. And I think it also opened up on a deeper level uh, topics like this topics that you know with carnivore areas where we haven't explored i think as human beings on a collective level we had to reach a critical mass point where we were just sick of suffering and sick of listening to those that are supposed to be telling us the truth and having some sense of authority and you know white coats you know if you will uh, in white coats and realizing that hey um no, we, we need to actually start to use ourselves as a guinea pig and recognize that, hey, nobody's going to change what's going on inside of myself, whether that's my organs or, you know, emotions or whatever, unless I actually make that choice. And so uh, I made that choice in regards to carnivore two months ago because one of my spiritual we weren't close friends or anything, but I used to watch her Facebook group feeds and stuff like that and just talking about expansion of consciousness and things, very grounded individual. She had a lot to say and, and sort of blew my mind. I didn't even sort of acknowledge that she was overweight at the time. I mean, that was just who she was. So I just sort of recognized that. But then she popped up on my Instagram feed uh, two months ago, ironically, when I was researching all of this stuff. And I had a pretty clear mind because of, you know, OMAD. And so she popped up and and I instantly I was like, holy smoke, she looks amazing. Her skin is glowing. You know, she just has got this smile. She's thin. It looks very healthy, you know. And so I messaged her and I said, Jamie, what is going on? What, do, you know, she goes, oh, I wrote a book. Uh, it's actually um She's got a website. It's called eatasteakbook.com. And she actually wrote a book. It's got a big steak on the front of it. And she goes, I've been carnivore. I've lost, I think she said 100 pounds or something like that. And it just blew my mind. I mean, I just was like beyond, you know, shocked. So when I get shocked like that, I make real instant decisions, you know. And at that moment, I was like, okay, I've got to do something here. I've done some extreme things with my body. I've done water fast, you know, for long periods of time and different things in the past, had some pretty transcendental spiritual experiences, which was awesome. You know, I heard you talking about in one of your, oh, when you were being interviewed by a woman, I was, I was watching that today, in fact, and um, you said that sometimes you can just be walking along and, you know, not thinking of anything and just have this like euphoric feeling, right? I noticed that three weeks into the carnivore, I, I'm doing a lot of exercising now and I was just walking along. All of a sudden I was like, wow, this is like instant clarity. It was just like this whoosh of clarity just came through. And I was just like, I feel so good. And it was weird because for the first time I could actually feel my stomach. It's hard to explain, but, you know, I've had a lot of, you know, like I said, intestinal problems for years. And it was like I could feel the core of myself as I was walking. It was like this inner strength that I'd never felt before. And I was like, ha, 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 I got a taste of something here. Now, this is where it's at. Intuitively, I always knew there was something else, right? But it's just that, you know, we all have that sense of tribe. You know, we want to, to, to socialize. You know, I've always been sort of a hermit in my life. But it's like we still want that connection or that sense of belonging, right? Does that make sense? 
And so I understand sort of the program with food and emotions and and all the things that go along with eating carbs, right? It's 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 very easy to understand and digest that in an unconscious way because so many of us want that connection. You know, if we're suffering and we go to a bar or if we're, you know, if we need to talk, then we do something to eat something to open that up in ourselves. You know, it's become the norm, sadly, you know, and I think we've come to a point now as human beings where we're like, we recognize that like with COVID, huge catalyst for change, huge catalyst. I mean, everyone, if everyone didn't have COVID, which I'm sure everyone didn't, but they knew somebody that did or somebody that passed away or somebody, somebody that passed away, you know, so it was a very real visceral in our life experience, right? And I think this really has taken us now to a new place because we're more open to what would be considered on the extremes of society in regards to carnivore and other sort of modalities. Even what um, the woman from, I believe she was from Harvard, was talking about in one of your interviews. Um, was that Stanton? Oh, Stan Stanford. Stanford. Stanford, okay. Oh my goodness. I mean, I was so blown away by her intelligence and her clarity and her just, I mean, just everything was outstanding to me, you know, because she's at the top of the food chain, in, in my opinion, in terms of making actual change, you know, that is relevant. And of course, you know, these doctors that are, are talking about carnivore. And uh, I love Sean Baker because, you know, in his Instagram, he's always got this, you know, big, huge steak of some kind with this huge knife. And he's like got a video playing of somebody that's had this amazing transformative experience. And he's a doctor, you know, so it's like he's got that credibility, but he also has that down to earth. He's also very caring and compassionate and has that love energy, you know, in his heart as well as you do. And, and many of us, you know, it doesn't matter if we're in a male or female body. I'm not talking about that in that sense, but I'm just saying that none of this could happen if carnivore and this no carb uh, experience hadn't come up to the surface, right? Come up and weld up, you know, sort of like a volcano after all the, all the failures and our perceived failures that we've all gone through and experienced. I mean, my heart goes out to that one woman um, that you interviewed, and she just she just went through so much. I mean, it was just one thing after the other. I'm not remembering her name at the moment, but I mean, I was literally just crying tears because it's like, how is it that we've got to the point as human beings where suffering just has become the norm, you know, or we're suffering in silence? And blaming ourselves. Oh, it's my fault or it's my genetics. Yeah. I mean, even down to, you know, addictions like alcoholism or any kind of, you know, heavy addiction, cigarettes or whatever. Most of that is going is 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 preceded by the foods in regards to that that bridge from the food, you know, to actual uh, debilitating uh, addictions is something that many of us really haven't uh consciously considered before right and even though i don't have any credentials under my belt you know yet in my life i do have uh, a lot of experience with with trauma and being around people that have uh, pretty intense addictions and i'm starting to recognize that this dynamic that is going on just just worldwide is something that can easily be solved, right? And it really starts with just not putting the poisons in our body and becoming conscious of the fact that a lot of these things that we are thinking are good for us and we're told are good for us, fruits and vegetables and you know, yada, 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 um, in truth is just not, it's not reality. It's not the reality. Now, I do want to sort of clarify that I think everybody's physical bodies are different and they operate differently and everybody's at different walks and experiences in their life. So I would say that um, carnivore may not be for everyone. 
maybe there's you know maybe there's in keto may, may not be for everyone and that's okay right i think that's also the beautiful thing and i heard you talking about this now when you go and approach life or you know interviews or whatever it is you're not in a hurry to and and you gave that reference about your um your your job you know and before you cared so much about your sort of will or your idea you know being enforced in a part of the whole thing and then you had this clarity that you realize that you know in four or five years what difference does any of this make right it, it really doesn't and i and i really loved how you said that and how you worded that because it touched my heart because i was like this is what we need more of on the planet right is more people that are open to the idea of balance it's you know this whole polarity consciousness us versus them isn't getting us anywhere you know uh, in terms of human beings i mean even when you look at the political party it's all being fueled by the same thing it's all fear it's all a uh, certain dynamics that are going in by the things that people are consuming that they're just not conscious of and so they're making decisions based off of uh, fuel you know uh, that is not beneficial to their body so if it's not beneficial to their body then of course the brain isn't able to r remain any kind of balanced ecosystem you know if if you will if that makes sense so uh going back you know to your original question i know it's easy for us all you know because we get excited it's like somebody wants to hear my story this is so exciting you know um and many of us just want to be heard we you know we have something to say and most a lot of people just don't you know really think to care about that and i appreciate the fact that you're you put yourself in this position and i you know in one of your interviews you talked or being interviewed you talked about how this is not something you planned. And I love those unexpected positive occurrences that can happen in our lives, you know, because that shows us that there, you know, there may be a higher power or there may be some sort of magnetism. I always think of spirituality or some, you know, uh, magnetism as, as like actual magnets, right? It's like, you, we can't see that connection that's happening when two magnets are repelling each other or coming together, but it's still there. You know, so it's like just because we can't see something and that that sort of brings me into that space of the heart energy. We already know. I mean, it's been proven that the heart is a is a, is a magnet right in our in our our physical heart. So I think that we're all connected in some way or another, even if we've never met each other in the physical world. And I think right now, because we're clearing out the fat and all this crap around our actual organs that vibratory state is now starting to magnetize those of us that have something to say or something to learn or something to you know express because all these ideas are are going are going in the same direction you know in a sense which is health wellness balance neutrality amusement compassion joy i mean most of us just want to get along with everybody else you know you know in my opinion you know there are those crazy people out there but chances are they're eating carbs <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> yeah um so like depression's gone yeah yeah um and your gum health is better is there anything else like what happened what happened weight wise or so i've released um 32 pounds um in uh in two months so roughly you know 15 pounds a month now because i've had so much energy and i've never had this consistent of energy in my life uh i've been you know uh walking 10 miles a day maybe more uh biking i biked 18 miles uh yesterday um you know it, it, it the energy now there are times when when my body and my brain says okay it's time to heal it's time to rest andy so i'll sleep you know but the interesting thing too is, is that for years, I didn't get any energy from consuming food. I noticed that other people that I knew, you know, did, but I never did. I was just always dependent. I was just, I ate because I felt like I had to eat. Another thing that I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, I haven't heard anybody else talk about this, but a lot of people talk about how, you know, hunger, 
um, has you know gotten better for them on carnivore. For me, I haven't had actual hunger pains in probably 25 to 30 years, right? So I always ate just because it was time to eat. It wasn't an actual uh, feeling of hunger pains. I can recount maybe 10 times in the last 25 years where I had a tinge of something that would re maybe resemble, you know, a hunger pain. And some people would say, you know, wow, <laughs> great. But there's also that sort of feeling of numbness, you know, uh, due to trauma and things like that. It sort of numbs out the senses. And uh, for years, I couldn't taste food because I was so traumatized. Um, and I mean, I went through a lot of different trauma. So, um, so I'm getting into this space now where every once in a while I'll get a little twinge of something, you know, like a little, it's more so. It's like my stomach feels hollow almost or, or an empty feeling. Like I can feel it, you know, and I'm like, oh, that feels good to feel human again. You know, it's just like that, that's amazing. So how, how are you eating these days? So these days, uh, I'm on a fixed budget. I'm on SSI. I've been on SSI or disability since 2012 due to chronic fatigue and depression. Um, so I've been, uh, I eat mainly hamburger. Um, and um, I have a friend, I volunteer at a, a veterans um, uh, place. It's called the Legion in Kenai here in Alaska. And um, I get a steak for volunteering, a, a ribeye. <laughs> so <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> and so I have a ribeye once a week. Uh, but then they also gift me a um, fat cap uh, from, from that. So then uh, my roommate, which is a mother figure in my life, my real mom passed away years ago, and she considers herself my mom. And um, anyway, so she, um, she taught me how to process uh, the fat and so now I've got jars of of that all, you know, uh, around and I just take a spoonful of that, you know, or butter, those types of things uh, in order to keep my fat uh, up. So mainly that's what I consume. Um, I posted an ad because I on uh, the classifieds on Facebook a couple about a couple of weeks ago now. I can't believe I did it, but I've gotten such positive responses. All I said is, "We'll do physical labor for meat and eggs." <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and I was like, and I, you know, later on I kind of edited it, edited it more, but I basically said this is specifically for those who are immobile and may have, you know, a lot of Alaskans have a lot of frozen you know, game meats that they just have in there, you know, and they don't know what to do with it or whatever and all kinds of circumstances. So I was like, well, I got physical energy now, so I might as well put that to good use and I'm on a fixed income. So <laughs> let's just do this. You know, <laughs> So I've had several people um, either gift me, you know, some uh, some meats out of their freezer or we're in the process now. I had a woman uh, call me. She lives in Sterling, and we're going to work out a situation where I'm going to go over there and work for her, and you know, do an exchange. So, you know, really positive results, you know, from from this. So I'm really super excited to see sort of where it goes, you know. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So, two months in, you've had a lot of good results. Um, yes. is, is this it for you? There's no going back. You know, I've learned that, um, not to do things in extremes. So I would say that after I've healed, cause I mean, it might as well just be full disclosure. I've had erectile dysfunction for 20, probably a little over 20 years. And you can imagine how much that's affected my relationships and things like that. So this is one of the areas that I'm basically doing super strict carnivore because when I went to the doctor about a year ago in Tennessee, the doctor told me she'd never seen as high triglycerides as I have. They were up, you know, into the high thousands. So, um, so that scared me. And that was right after COVID. So actually I got super depressed because I was thinking, wow, I've been doing keto, you know, for over a year and 
I, you know, and I've been gluten free for eight, you know, what is it going to take in order to get some balance? You know, soup, I had high blood pressure and all that stuff. So I got severely depressed again. And I was like, you know what? Screw this. I went over to, I met a woman, um, I was doing readings and stuff on Facebook and she met me on there and she was really impressed. So she actually invited me over to her, her place and Long story short, I lived there for for two years. Uh, that's what I just come back from four four to five months ago in March, March thirteenth. And anyway, um, I got over there, and that's when I got that news. You know that that shortly after that, you know, I got that news about my high triglycerides and the doctor and stuff like that. And you know, right away, of course, she's like, "You got to go on stat statins." And so I did. I went on statins. I felt horrible, just horrible. Couldn't think was gaining weight, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I'm a very strong, willpowered person. Like I don't go with the status quo of society. I don't care if they're in a white coat or not. Like I'm, you know, I listen to my own truth. I've reprogrammed my subconscious mind through self-hypnosis while I'm sleeping. You know, I've done that for years. So I, you know, I've taught myself different modalities to get through the muck and the mire of the illusions and the lies that were were fed all the time because most of the lies were fed the people that are spreading them don't even know that they're spreading them so there's no judgment there you know it's just it's just happens to be the way things are sometimes so when she she had the kindest you know this doctor is kindest um, bed manner or whatever they call that very intelligent you know human and she's like well i want you to get on this and take this high blood pressure medication and stuff so i did for a little while and she's like i want you to get on the antidepressant and I, I would I was on antidepressants for a year. So I was like, I was super soup. I was really concerned about that, you know, and, and so I did, though, because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do, because I, I started feeling fear and trepidation because I she was like, you could have a stroke, you know, at any time. I mean, you know, it's just this is bad news. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you don't even realize how much I've worked on my body for years. I mean, olive oil and, you know, you name it, just all this health stuff. In fact, I spent um, six to seven months before I moved to Tennessee um, taking Dr. Gundry's advice. He was the first one that I learned about lectins. And, um, you know, he's all over the internet too. And he wrote a book and stuff. And I was like, holy crap, lectins are what's giving me this leaky gut. I've had leaky gut for years and brain fog and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't have much money, but I'm going to take what, what I have and I'm going to invest it into his stuff. So with the butyrate specifically, I started to repair the lining, my intestinal mucosa or whatever they call that. And I noticed it. And that's one of the reasons why when I got over to Tennessee, she was not, you know, into health at all and still is not. And, you know, wanted to take me out to restaurants and stuff like that. And, and all of a sudden I was like, you know what? Nothing I'm doing is making any difference. My triglycerides are through the roof. You know, my blood pressure. I'm just like, screw it. I'm just going to have some fun in life and enjoy food. And I mean, I'd always been super restrictive with food. You know, grew up extreme vegetarian out there in the woods and all that stuff. And so, and I ate meat after that, you know, years later and stuff. I incorporated meat. But I was always super aware of my body and my health and stuff. And um, so... Once I got over there, I was just like, I just threw caution to the wind. After I got that diagnosed with the doctor, I was just like, screw it. So I just started eating everything. I mean, just wheat, dairy, you name it. And the beautiful aspect of that is for at least, I would say, a year, I had no problems with leaky gut because I had repaired that through Dr. Dr. Gundry's, you know, uh, um, method. And so... I was just like, oh, great, I'm free of this. I can do whatever I want, da, 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 and stuff. And I was just like, and then one day, one day I felt it. There's a feeling, you know, with people that have leaky gut, they know what I'm talking about. It's just, it's there. It's back, it's present. You know, the candida, my tongue was starting to get all coated and stuff. And I was just like, oh, crap. I started to get brain fog. I started to have to sleep, you know, through the day. And she would go to work, you know, a full-time waitress. So she would go to work. I'd sleep the whole time she was gone, be up for a couple hours when she got back and then sleep all through the night and then wake up and I was just completely dead, you know? And the remainder of that time, I was pretty much in bed the whole time. You know, it was just, 
you know, and that wreaks havoc on relationships and all this stuff. The interesting thing is, is that when we're consuming things that are not good for us, it doesn't just affect us. You know, I mean, it affects everyone that we're connected to. If we're in a job or whatever, I was, uh, um, I, I eventually sort of got to where I healed a little bit. So then I became a, um, um, Oh, what do they call that? Uh, a patient dietary aide at the local hospital for three months. And I was running back and forth all over the place and uh, met some really cool people. But I started to realize that, oh, my goodness, you know, all these all these patients are suffering. They're all hooked up to these IVs. They're I mean, young people, older people. And I, I started to recognize there's no compassion. I got in trouble for staying in the rooms after I delivered their food. You know, 90 year old woman doesn't have any family or anything like that. She recognizes that I have a heart and I'm, you know, wanting to connect with her on an emotional level and asking her questions and I'm getting reprimanded for it, you know, and I wasn't in there 20 minutes. I was in there like literally five minutes, but five minutes, you know, in each room that takes away from all kinds of things, you know, their ratings and things like that. And once I started to recognize that, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. You know, uh, I just, it, it's one of those things where I, I was so enmeshed in it and I wanted to do it. But when I started to realize that this wasn't making a difference, it, it's just a band aid. And I wasn't even aware of carnivore at that point, but I knew enough in my past experiences. I was just like, there's something wrong with the system is broke. You know, they're getting all these high ratings because they're they have this questionnaire of all these specific things. And they go in there and ask, did the you know, did your person that comes in, did they ask you if you could open and close the door? And, you know, all these things that so those are all yeses, but there's no questions that said, hey, did they empathize with you? Did they make sure that your needs were met? You know, are you doing OK? You know, nothing like on the heart level. And so. After I realized that I was just a slave there, I was just like, no, this is this is not I can't, you know, I want to make a difference. I don't want to, you know, just perpetuate the existing problem. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. So if, if a friend came to you and said, I want to do this carnivore, what advice would you give them? Um, that's a great question. I love that question. The first thing I would say is, um, have you done have you done any research? Have you? Uh, I, I would advise them or guide them into a space of saying, "Hey, I recognize that you want to do this carnivore, and I think that's commendable." However, uh, I would encourage you first to get on maybe the uh, Facebook group page where there's a bunch of people because I said the thing about starting carnivore is is there's a lot of things that happen in the physiology and the body and just the transformations that take place that you'll want answers to, you know, and you'll have questions about. And if you ask those that aren't doing carnivore, they'll just tell you that, you know, high LDL or whatever, you know, you're going to have a heart attack or whatever. And that's not the truth. You need people that are actually in the process or have done this in order to sort of give you a sense of peace because as you're making proper choices for your mind and your body there's always going to be those that are not in alignment and those that are not your cheerleaders and are not supporting you and it's those critical times when you know especially the first week or so it's like for me i made sure that i plugged into the carnivore over 40 page you know, on Facebook, I think that's what it's called. And I went back in the files and just started reading, you know, tons of information. First of all, I don't, I don't want any crap. I don't want some fad. I want the truth. I want to get through all the no's and get to the yeses, right? So it's like, and I've learned that there's so much crap that, you know, we're fed and so many illusions. And it's just like, okay, I realize everybody's different here, but that's what I would do is I would say, hey, that's great that you are, you know, on board to making that that conscious choice. However, there are going to be some areas where if you get some support or at least have access to asking questions that have done this, people that have done this, just regular people doesn't have to be doctors, but just regular people, then 
you know, that can activate your heart. It can keep you going to that next level, right? And and then you'll be able to see those physical results in your body. And if you have something like your electrolytes are unbalanced or potassium or magnesium is off, then you don't have to just go 100% strict lion diet. You know, you can reestablish that balance in your own body. You're listening to your own body. And that's really where the true strength, in my opinion, comes from. Because once we get a few wins under our belt, it's just like full on. You know, it's just like, oh, wow. I feel better today than I did yesterday. How is that? I'm sleep. I slept one more hour than I did. You know, I'm not snoring as much. And by the way, I was diagnosed with, you know, sleep apnea. And uh, my, the mother figure in my life, she was telling me the other day that, you know, I'm not snoring so like nasally and aggressively anymore. It's more of sort of a normal type of a snore, you know, and I mean, deep sleep is absolutely critical for our mental health, our physical health. I mean, yeah. So, you know, and having lost 30 pounds already, that makes a huge difference with the inflammation and, and all that stuff in the throat. I mean, I have a very recessed chin. I got that from my dad. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's why I wear this <laughs> goatee sort of covered up. But, you know, I have a double chin regardless of the weight that I lose or whatever. But because of that, you know, it can make that throat have more of a opening or fatty space in there. There's not a lot of muscle in there to hold that in or whatever. I'm not sure all the technical details, but I do know that when I was heavier, the sleep was just, uh, you know, it just, I was waking up all the time and it was causing all kinds of problems. And now I'm getting between six and, you know, five and six, five, seven, between five and seven hours of sleep a night. And that's a win for me. I mean, big time, you know, big time. So, yeah. Nice. So, Andy, is there a way that people can reach out to you? Or do you have any social media? Um, I'm currently working on a uh, YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> it's just uh, but the way to get in contact with me is people know me around here as the um, meat and eggs guy. <laughs> so it just, you know, if they get on Facebook and just put in meat and eggs guy specifically, then I have a, a, a Facebook page. Now, there's not a lot of stuff on it, but it does, you know, talk about my story and different things uh, of that nature. Um, and then I uh, believe my YouTube is um, TM118, uh, and that's also connected to the meat and eggs uh, guy, you know, thing. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's where I'm at with uh, with that type of thing. I mean, I could give you my email too. I'm not sure, you know, if that's in alignment or. I mean, do people do that? Uh, sure. I, I, I can put the links to YouTube and Facebook and email down below. Okay, great. So it's yeah. super simple. It's andytalbot33 at gmail.com. I am so open to, to meeting um, people that are along this path or even encouraging other people. Uh, like I said, I'm no doctor. I don't have any credentials under my belt uh, yet. Uh, but I, I'm so enthralled and enthused by people like yourself and those that are doing this. I wouldn't even consider it work really, but I'm sure it is on some level, but it's just exciting to see people's minds opening and expanding and getting really the truth finally. You know, the truth uh, is just, oh, it's it's like drinking a cool drink of water after being stuck in the desert for a hundred years. You know, it's just like that frequency of the truth is just like, ah, oh, I need some more of that truth, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm at. No, no problem. So I'll I'll link to all your socials below. Um, okay, Andy, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your story. Uh, and I hope you'll come back and give us an update after a few months. I would love to. After a few months, I appreciate you so much. So, Andy, uh, excuse me. <laughs> so. So that's why I don't like, that's why <laughs> not being live is good. <laughs> so Andy, how did you find, now, now I'm <laughs> laughing. <laughs> well, it's good energy, you know. Okay. So 
<laughs> I guess we're gonna I, have to get this out first. So, I'm, I'm sorry if that was a. I'm sorry if that burst your eardrums as I laughed there. Andy, how did you find carnival? <laughs> I'm so sorry. You probably got other interviews after this. <laughs> well, it took Andy 20 minutes to get started. Okay. All right. We'll just, we'll edit that part out. You did it perfect. <laughs> we'll just edit out my laughter. Okay. All right. Um. Well, thanks for asking. Uh... <laughs> oh, my God. 